my name is not inserted, so I'm Jad Oseiran from IBM. And actually, one of the, there are positive aspects of working, and, and less positive aspects by working for a company like IBM, a big multinational. And one of the more positive aspects that I realized is that you have to always articulate the value. So we started this initiative on circular economy, and I'll say a few words why IBM. I mean, we're also wondering because many people ask me, are we still selling computers? And we have moved since that time to another business model, which is actually the, the, the topic of the discussion today. But actually, we were constantly challenged when we started this business of uh, the center of competence on circular economy, is that what's the value? What's the value proposition? And it's actually quite a, a question which will force you to keep your feet on the ground. Because I also got inspired a lot by the concept of cradle to cradle four years ago when I got the training. Also, Katya was one of the tutors. Um, and of course, then you to go into other school of thoughts with biomimicry and circular economy coming based on cradle to cradle principles. But the key question working for a company like IBM, okay, what's the value? And um, it's risky because in a technology company also, you're always uh, tempted to push engineering solutions. We have the technology solutions for digital, for data tracking, for tracking and tracing, for building the passport, for getting insights, doing analytics. But actually, what's the value? In which business context? So if we can do it from a technology point of view, um, does it make business sense? And this is where the business model uh, concept actually is very important to understand. So what's that value proposition behind this whole bump project? Why, why stakeholders will be interested in it? How easily accessible it is to, to implement it, to scale it up, and to reach that last mile, because you can have the reversible building design criteria, you can have uh, the cradle-to-cradle -cradle materials passport criteria, but how, how effectively accessible to the market and, and usable as well. And this is where I think it's important to have that, uh, that business model understanding. So at IBM, we have a unit called GARS, Global Asset Recovery Services, which is part of IGF, IBM Global Finance. And that's a two billion uh, business per year. And the main objective of GARS is to reuse of all our products. So it's actually a circular economy unit within IBM making healthy profit margins. And it's serving the business model of IBM. And this is also a good link for you to understand the business model. So IBM moved from products to software, to services, to solutions, which is basically we're not anymore selling the laptops, which we've sold that business, which is more commodity. We still sell the higher end mainframes that cost millions of euros, but we also sell move to selling cloud services. So you as a client, you're less interested if it's a refurbished machine or a new machine which has refurbished parts in it. You just want the, the performance of having your data or having your analytic services, your applications running in a secure way. You're not interested if it's a new or, or, or a reused machine because there is the guarantee of a certain performance level. And this is where our guards unit was serving this business model shift to start providing these machines which are actually reused for our performance model. So, so that's actually, you saw our name coming up with other, uh, other uh, uh, work streams on technology. And of course, we have a role on IT. But when we were approached, I thought it would be very important to link that to the business model understanding. Because this is the whole point, that is technology applied for meeting a business value. So we have, of course, two main uh, work streams here, as you saw before. So you have the materials, passport, and the reversible building design. For us, actually, we are treating them as true twins in this project. Because ultimately, the, we are looking here at how to enable the optimal repurposing or reuse of the building at different levels. It could be reconfiguring, repurposing the building. It's a hotel, and in 10 years, there's no more requirements for a hotel. Can we make it a school? Uh, or it's a commercial, you make it resi residential. But there are also models where you go across the whole spectrum, what also Katya talked about, the products, the system, the lighting systems, or HVAC systems in the building, how refurbishment, the lifts in the, in, the, in the building, also moving maybe to uh, selling the vertical transport services instead of selling lifts. Uh, you see now also many of these manufacturers moving to these models of providing people flow models, not providing, not selling lifts or selling conveyors. So that will also imply that these systems will be also reused, 
moving to the material, up to the material level, where you also have to have insights. So we're treating these two streams as a key uh, 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 requirements, if you want, for uh, uh, also for the technical solution, requirements for the technical solution that we're building. But we're gonna approach it more from the business model perspective. So what, what is it actually serving? And how will it, service the, how it, will it serve the different uh, stakeholder groups? And I will, talk, I will say a few words, what do we mean here by business model? Because we look into, and we have a session in the afternoon which is more actually detailed, so I'm not gonna spend lots of time here, but business model, lots of people talk about it, and I noticed in these conventions, but also other uh, uh, meetings where you have different understandings. We're approaching it basically from three different dimensions. First, the industry model, so how is that really impacting the whole industry in the sense of the whole ecosystem? I mean, a simple example moving, uh, you know, with the Apple, with the digital music, I mean, it changed really the industry of music listening, uh, moving from the CDs to really buying digitally, or also the example of Netflix. Um, but of course, you have also an implication on the revenue model, so when we are moving from selling uh, computers or selling mainframes and services to selling cloud services, that's also a different revenue model. We are earning differently. And that also could put some strains because also for Philips selling light as a service instead of selling lamps or selling the uh, vertical transport for some of uh, our uh, 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 lifts manufacturer clients, that means that they are also changing the way they are earning money. What's the implication of that? Because they're engaging differently with their clients, of course. That's a longer relationship. But how sustainable from a, a revenue model point of view and how profitable it is. So also these are things we need, to, we need to understand and assess. And finally, the enterprise model. So what does that mean in terms of capabilities for the company? If you, if you divide this company into chunks of business units which are really capabilities to enable this revenue model and the new value proposition, what does that mean? So for example, if we are moving to a circular model, your product design capability is an important one to, for modularity. But is it only enough? I mean, you can design the best modular product in the world, uh, like electric toothbrush or, or a, a computer, but if you don't have a model where you can recover it, what's the point? Or if it's ending up at a recycler in another country, which has no clue how to uh, get, it, get the components out, what was the point of having only this capability? So the enterprise model is really defining all these critical capabilities for a company to move to that model. And the company could be any of the stakeholder group in the whole industry, construction industry chain. So we're also talking, it could be a recycling company, which also needs different capability, but also the, uh, the construction company like BAM, which also needs to start embedding capabilities of circular design and maybe data uh, access in their construction, the architects, the developers, etc. So we, we, we also uh, map that. The target operating model is that, what does that mean to your operations? So you have defined how, where the industry uh, in a viable way is moving and the, and, and the revenue model, the, the capabilities of the company. So now what does that mean to your processes, to your KPI? How are you measuring your salespeople? Um, what about technology? Do you have a, a system, a, a information technology system to capture all this data, but also analytics capability to know what to do with these products upon return? Because you may have no clue What's the best thing to do? Do you refurbish it or remanufacture it or do you take out the components or do you recycle? So these are an example of the operating model. So I think for the stakeholders, just to, to close, what are the opportunities for stakeholders? I think you have to look at it from the perspective of this project. It's not just the proof that we have the material science and the architecture knowledge and that we have the, the information technology capability. That's not the main aim of this project. The main aim of this project is to scale it up and to make it an example and a viable example or proof point that it can work in the real business community. And this is where it's important to have participation from the stakeholders. Also the question we got about liability, that's a good aspect where all the suppliers or the potential clients of, uh, which will benefit from this symbiosis what are these key requirements? What are the hurdles? So what is that really problem statement that we're trying to solve? What are the value drivers? And where do we get to the value proposition? Because ultimately it's a value proposition and value for one stakeholder could make money, value for another stakeholder, which a user of a building could be healthy indoor air. So there are different 
value proposition for different stakeholders, and we need to make sure that we address those. And this is where your, uh, your participation is important. So we're having that session in the afternoon.